during these Sundays in Lent, we have been seeking to grow deeper in our faith and exploring our understanding of Jesus through the encounters of those in the Gospel stories who met Jesus. We have met the tempter and Nicodemus, the unnamed woman at the well, the man born blind, and today we meet Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. This is quite a story, wouldn't you say? So let's enter the story today and imagine how the biblical characters might tell the story from their experience. Imagine yourself in the story. What would you say or do in this situation? Imagine your encounter with Jesus. What would Jesus say to you? With the help of Robert Walker today, we meet Lazarus. The light hurts. The brightness sears my eyes. I recoil from the painful brilliance. I want to stay in the cool and soothing darkness. Where am I? What is this place of darkness with light blazing through the doorway? Why are these cloths wrapped around me? And that smell. What is that awful smell? Am I in a dream or a nightmare? I remember. I was ill. My fever rose and I saw only blackness. How long have I been asleep? A day? A year? An eternity? Time seems to have stopped. I hear my name, Lazarus, come out! I am summoned out into the burning light. That voice, where have I heard that voice? Calling me out of the darkness. My eyes gradually adjust to the light. I see indistinct shapes and blurred forms, like mirages shimmering on the horizon. I hear the voices of women. They are also vaguely familiar. One shape comes into focus. A man standing apart from the crowd. His silhouette is familiar. I begin walking into that glaring brightness. People are all around. They turn their heads and cover their noses. I smell myself, that odor is coming from me. A terrible awareness dawns upon my dulled senses. I am wrapped in grave cloths. I reek of death. Am I dead? I remember the burning fever, my sister Martha weeping and saying, he is dying. I must have died, but that is impossible. Now I am alive, called out of death by the voice of Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus' voice who called me out of a tomb. I don't remember being placed there. I was dead then, I guess. I am alive, how can this be? This is too much for me to take in. I am overwhelmed with Joy, confusion, wonder, fear, yes, all of these and more. Words cannot capture the emotions I feel. Am I really alive? I try to rem remember what life feels like. To live is to see, smell, and walk. I feel my own touch. I try to unwrap the claws binding me, but cannot. I hear myself breathing. I really am alive. I hear Jesus' command. Unbind him and let him go. I fumble with the cloth around my jaw and feel it loosen. My sisters start unwrapping my grave claws. I will be naked, but what do I care? A naked dead man who has come to life. What a story these people will have to tell. So what do we learn about Jesus in this encounter? This reading is commonly known as the raising of Lazarus. It is the story about Lazarus, the one whom Jesus loved. It's a story about his illness and death and burial and decay and emergence from the tomb. Upon being recalled from death to life, with burial wrappings still dangling all around him. And 
yet, this story is about even more. It is not just a story about Lazarus, but also about Martha and Mary and all the friends who were around. It is a story about the wondrous deliverance from death to life and the one who brings it. And it's all about the responses of others to Jesus. This is a story to help people believe. Let's look at all the times that Jesus talks about believing in this story. He says, For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Martha said, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. As Jesus talks with Martha and Mary, he reveals again that he is the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in the one who is the resurrection and the life shall never die. Jesus is supporting them in their personal faith. Martha and Mary believe and they say, you are the Christ, the Son of God. Some see and believe. Those who have seen what Jesus has done, their faith becomes enlightened. Jesus also reminds that blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Believing is central to who we are as faithful Christians. We may not always logically understand we may not know how things will turn out, but there is power in believing. For example, when John Wesley was early in his faith, he had times when he questioned, when he wanted to understand more about Jesus. And in his great frustration, he proclaimed one day that he would just have to have faith and then figure out the rest later. And then he went on to be the founder of our United Methodist Church. There was power in his believing. And another example is my mother's cousin, Phyllis. We celebrated her life and faith yesterday at her memorial service. Phyllis had such a strong belief in new life after death. She was so ready to enter the next chapter of her eternal life, that she was an inspiration to those around her. I remember that when I told one of her friends at the Presbyterian Manor that Phyllis had died, this friend's response startled me for a moment, for she said, Oh good, I'm glad she got to. <laughs> in the new life of resurrection. You know, our believing comes to us in all kinds of ways, in all levels, in the midst of the everyday, from the past, the present, the future. You know, I believe that there is a cactus in Phoenix with my name on it, where my family went for our desert picnics. Well, Jake, we found it! <laughs> and not to leave him out, here I am, and Jake, the next one, Rick was there too. <laughs> now, of course, my search for a saguaro cactus is not as deep as the way we believe in our faith. 
but it does help us feel <laughs> the power of believing. I believe that that cactus, or one very nearly like it, in the same place in the desert where I was as a child, was formative in my family life, and consequently in my growing faith. <clears throat> it's just the same as singing in the children's choir when I was a little youngster was formative in my belief. And when we worshiped there last Sunday, it was almost more than I could take to see the little children get up to sing and put on those same white robes with the same wooden crosses that I wore a long time ago. <laughs> But right there in that moment, I could feel the power of believing. Because in those formative times, each of us, those formative experiences of our faith, large and small, wherever they are, and everything in between, those formative experiences shape who we are as faithful disciples. And those formative experiences in our spiritual life come to us over and over again throughout our lives when we believe. Today we encounter that powerful faith of Mary and Martha as they believe in Jesus as the resurrection and the life. We see the new life for Lazarus as he responds to the voice of Jesus in whom he believes. We hear again that promise of new life from Jesus for all who believe. For when we believe, we die to those old ways and we move from darkness to new life. Jesus encourages us to grow in our faith, just as he encouraged those in this story today. Jesus supports us as we move toward him and grow in our understanding and believing. He wants us to deepen and extend our faith to recognize him for who he is and the ways that he reaches out to us. We are not only learning about him, we believe. And Jesus believes in us and gives us the strength and courage to step out in our faith. So how are we stepping out in our faith this Lent? Remember that part of our faith journey is always asking ourselves the questions. And today, the questions before you that you've received in your bulletin are for you to think about now or in the week to come. How do you see yourself today in this story? And when has the power of God's love brought you out of a self-made tomb of fear or guilt or selfishness? How does the sign of Lazarus raising show you that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? And perhaps most important for all of us to ask ourselves repeatedly, what do you believe about Jesus? And what do you believe about yourself? God is calling each of us from the death inside us to new life in the present moment. And through the questions of Jesus for us today, we affirm again our relationship of Jesus and me, that Jesus invites each and every one of us and welcomes us to grow deeper in our spiritual life. It is time to open ourselves to that deeper relationship and find new ways to live our discipleship. We believe that Jesus is for all people and new life 